So, we finished Shadowfall Returns last time. Um, let's start Dragonfall. Hopefully that music's not too loud. I wonder, is my mic too loud? No, I think it's okay. The year is 2054. The promise of opportunity and anonymity draws you to the free city of Berlin, the Flux State. A grand experiment in social order. Corporations tread carefully here. Even the great dragon, Lothware, only has so much sway in the constantly evolving power structure of Berlin. The perfect place for a savvy Shadowrunner to disappear and begin anew, if only it were that simple. I'm pretty normal. Sweet. Uh, now, I do know we do not play the same character in this, but I am basically creating the same character, so deal with it. What portrait did we even use last time? Oh, we used this one, right? That is the coolest one. I really enjoyed being a uh, ringer. I'm going to lower the music a little. It's a shame because I love the music. Karma represents the experience character turning out. Yeah, okay. my mic might be peaking a little bit. I might have to lower it. Not or I can just talk quieter. Oh, okay, let's see. I'm a security rigger. Jack the Rigger. That's <laughs> stupid. Oh, the, the Harfeld Manor Run. Life was good. Easy jobs, regular pay, a reliable crew. But things went south and you had to drop off the grid. Put a bullet in the past and start fresh somewhere new. The promise of opportunity and anonymity draws you to the free city. We read this sentence already. Or this paragraph. And as luck would have it, home to your old partner in crime, Monica Schaefer. It's your third run with Monica and her team. An old castle holdfast, one hour east of Berlin, perched on the hill overlooking the countryside. The job is standard smash and grab. Crack the vault, grab the data, get out in one piece. A mediocre payday, but work is work. As the team gathers for Monica's pre-run briefing, you pause to take in your surroundings. Yeah. 
The estate grounds are silent, save for the faint whistling of the wind. Your team gathers near a side entrance to the old castle holdfast, cloaked in darkness. The night is peaceful. You know it won't last. You know it for what it is, a pleasant illusion that will shatter at the sound of the first gunshot. Um... Yeah. Listen up, folks. Monica Schaefer, you ran with her back in the day, watched her get her first day to Jack, and now she's your team leader and a hot direct decker to boot. We're on a tight timetable. I want to enter the estate, find the basement, open the data vault, extract the files, and bolt. Ten minutes, top to bottom. Trying to get home in time for worm talk, love? Dietrich, shaman, the old man of the team. He smiles at her, his facial tattoos writhing in the moonlight. Monica's eyes twinkle with mischief. Maybe. I probably won't read most of these actual, like, little uh, flavor uh, parenthetical things. Just the dialogue. I think that works better. How many times have I told you you can't trust anything that comes out of a dragon's mouth? That trid trash will rot your brain. <laughs> it's educational. Besides, this should be a milk run. Security is supposed to be light. A few automatic weapons, no armor. With a little luck, they'll never know we were here. Hmm. Should be optimistic. Works for me. Let's get paid. Just like old times, eh? Jack the Rigger. I should name myself Baconator again. I won't argue with the sentiment, but I'd prefer that we exercise caution. Glory, razor clawed street samurai. Her voice is cold and neutral, her expression placid. Cold and neutral. I don't know how to do a cold and neutral voice, so. I don't know. You'll get what you get. Does cold and neutral mean, like, I don't robotic, like a, a Vulcan, or Mr. Data, or something. They may only be private security, but their bullets don't know that. I can patch you up if I have to, but I'd rather not have to. <laughs> I don't think that's what they're going for. <laughs> you people need to relax. We're professionals, remember? Ager, you in pers position? The comment crackles. Affirmative. The alarm lines have been cut, and I have a clear line of fire on the estate service entrance. When you exit the building, the path will be clear. Excellent. Thank you, Iger. Just doing my job. Iger out. See? We're professionals. All right, people. Enough chatter. Enough jibba-jabba. <laughs> Our client wants the data from the vault, so we get him the data from the vault. Quick, quiet, and quick. You, you said quick twice. Worm talk is on tonight. I told you, it's educational. Okay. Um, let's grab a weapon. Um, hmm. I like pistols. Okay, we can start with a Doberman just like last time. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, I should probably be following them. Okay, okay. Nothing to explore. They have a they have a motorcycle inside here. Is this the garage that we entered?
We have a T-Rex. Oh, I didn't read the text at the bottom quick enough. I didn't see it. Slavic artifacts. No Adidas? Is there a bot dinosaur? The vase in this case looks to be both very old and very valuable. A fine scroll work of lapis and gold leaf decorates its exterior, and the interior shimmers with the organic beauty of abalone shell. Your fixer could probably move this thing in a heartbeat. You can't help but notice that the glass encasing it looks awfully flimsy. Uh, so that will almost undoubtedly set off an alarm, right? But we'll remember it's there. And we have to be quick and quiet. And quick. So we have two unlocked doors. Let's go south. Or whatever direction this is. Oh no. I'm now in turn based combat mode. Rawr. Oh, this is a different interface. Oh, I'm too used to the uh, the other one right now. Uh, how do I activate my Doberman? Oh my god, it can move right next to him. Heck yeah. Okay, that was a little bit loud. Um, let's lower the volume more. Okay, I think that's better. I'm a theropod dinosaur. Let's see, Monica's the decker, although this isn't a decking thing, I don't think. Matrix alerts, er, security alert response plan, Quebec 6. Matrix operations locked. HTR team responding. Override. Sweet. Let's uh, skedaddle. Let's see. Okay, so she's a, like a uh, melee person. Just go chill there with Glory. How are you? You are uh, a Healy Shaman dude. Still is quite loud, isn't it? Uh, let me look at it when we have another gunshot. Get up right behind here, but that'll put me in like really close range of that shotgun. Oh, yeah, it's like a 
Naruto Kunai. Sweet. You can just try and shoot that. Oh. I didn't realize we'd be that close. Alright, let's just move up. It's at least good cover. Drone. Yeah, I have to lower the volume more. I can lower it in game, I guess. I don't have to keep on tweaking it here. Okay, here we go. Let's see how that works. So D trick, what is this uh, debuff or whatever else on you? Oh, you're wounded. Yeah, shotgun dude. This is not the door we need to go through, but... Okay, I screwed up there. I shouldn't have opened that one. Oh, now if I open this other door, is that going to be... Oh no, we are trying to get over there. Oh, is that the exit out? Okay, okay, I didn't screw up as badly as I thought I did. Uh, do we have some, like, half-decent cover? No, that's as good as we're getting, I guess. on my lady. Oh, 
like grenadier. We don't want to stack up too close. Don't kill Glory. I don't go in the vent. Oh my god, it's going vents. Finished off the mage. Oh, I pretty badly need to heal. This guy's gonna be dead. Oh my god, that didn't kill him? Really? Make it on uh, on her. Um, what is her health? Her total health. I think we need a big med kit. this door over here. What is this door? Oh, man. Oh. Well, we only have one. This feels a lot safer than smashing that bit of glass.
So far, so good. If you're skirmished with security, set off any alarms, you don't hear them. Monica leads the rest of the team downward, into the basement of the Harfeld Manor. Your payday is waiting. The data vault lies ahead. That's a big freaking vault, Liebchen. Bigger than on the schematic. The schematic didn't have a date. Our client may have old intel. Still, our instructions were clear. The data we're looking for should be just on the other side of this door. A quick jaunt into the matrix. A little digital hand-waving, and I'll have this thing wide open. BRB. Hold on, Monica. Who's in charge while you're jacked in? We've been through this before, Iger. You're not in the, in the cast K anymore, and that chain of command nonsense doesn't fly in the shadows. We don't need rules and regulations to guide us. The same principles that, are fly, that apply to the flux state. Please, spare me the lecture. Your politics have nothing to do with this. Best get used to it, Iger love. Look, it's a simple question. Years of experience tell me that it needs an answer. If someone needs to take charge, it'll happen. That might be how your mystical flux state works, but in the field, that kind of thinking gets you killed. Come on, Monica, put someone in charge, and let's get on with the mission. Very well, we'll do this one Iger's way. While I'm jacked in, Jack the Rigger's in charge. Jack the Rigger, did I hear you right? You're putting the rookie in command? I'm no rookie, Iger, and you know it. You heard what I said, Iger. This is ridiculous. I know this is a joke to you, Monica, but I'm telling you. Iger, the decision's made. You have your answer. Acknowledged. Sorry about that. Iger can be inflexible, the legacy of a long military career. But she knows what she's doing, and she means well. No sweat. I'll buy her a beer and tuck it out after the run. Good man. Iger's skills and experience are invaluable to the team. It would be good to have her on your side. Okay, enough chatter. Let's get this done. See you on the other side. And then she punches it. Pro then she punches it, projecting her consciousness into cyberspace. Her fingers harmonizing in the smooth, rhythmic staccato that can that only an expert decker can achieve. Fortune. Not an expert talker. Without warning, Monica's back arches violently and her head jerks back, silencing her terrible screams. Muscle spasms ripple through her face and her jaw snaps shut, sending a miss of blood spraying between her teeth. You look down and see a nub of pink flesh on the floor, the tip of her tongue. Is she, is she dead? The room explodes into action. Glory leaps towards Monica, her hand outstretched to yank the cord from her data jack. Dietrich surges forward to wrap the team's fallen decker in a bear hug, holding her against the convulsions that rack her body. With Monica's unearthly screams still ringing sharply in your head, you're only dimly aware of the door slamming shut behind you. Um... Yeah, oh, glory. 
While Glory holds Monica's head steady, you snatch the cord that connects Monica's data jack to her cyber deck. Without a moment's hesitation, you give a solid yank and the cord comes free. A wisp of oily blue smoke traces its way from her data jack to the ceiling. The commingled scents of charred meat and ozone fill the air. You've seen the effects of biofeedback before, but nothing like this. Suddenly, Monica's eyes flutter open, muscle tremors continue to distort her face, and blood oozes between her lips. You see the muscles in her jaw tensing and the look of concentration in her eyes. She's struggling to speak. I want that as my portrait. Um, let's see. Uh, well, this is a lie, but just stay with us, Monica, okay? We're going to get you out of here. Save your breath. She's had a stroke, a bad one. She'll be dead before we even back to the van. Uh, talk to me, Monica. What are you trying to say? Slowly, painfully, Monica wrestles her jaw open. The blood welled up in her mouth comes pouring out in a slick, covering her chest. She expels a thick, guttural sound that might be a word. Satisfied, she closes her eyes and forces her mouth to make the shape she needs. F -f fear With an effort, Monica opens her eyes again and meets yours. You see pain and fear in her gaze and something else. Hope. Oh, not fear. Uh, fear swing. I don't know what this word is. A sudden spasm jerks Monica's head back again. She grunts, then her chin drops to her chest, and her head lolls to one side. Her eyes fix on an object in the next room, a computer terminal. The soft light of a cursor blinks on its recessed screen. Slowly, she attempts to speak again, but the only sound that emerges is a long, strangled croak. A look of resignation washes over Monica's face, and she stops fighting. Her gorse-like jaw goes slack, and she dies. Well then. Uh, so this, this mission is going really well. Okay, so we can't leave through the door behind us. We have to leave through these guys. Haste them. Oh, I should have been hasting glory. Oh, well.
MCPOS Building Maintenance Software version 1.01. Command line interface. Internal memory checksum invalid. Jack the rigger, jack the rigger, jack the rigger, jack the rigger, jack the rigger. They've sealed the door behind us. We've got to find another way out of here. What are you doing? Uh, Monaco's trying to tell me something about this terminal. It must be important. With any ideas? Something tells me we're going to have more company soon. Uh, say Frosty Dietrich. A problem has been detected with a core component of MCPOS. Restore MCPOS to factory default settings? Yes, no. Warning, restore process will take several minutes to execute. Connected doors and peripherals will be disarmed when complete. Heck yeah! Sweet. As you watch, the numbers on the screen slowly begin to climb. This is going to take a while. You glance down at a second screen to see that the facility is on high alert. In place of a simple data vault, it seems you've stumbled upon some kind of massive underground complex. A map of the holdfast grounds indicates that security forces are en route from multiple angles. The doors currently being rebooted by the system's restore process are flashing a dull red. If you're reading this display correctly, the only exit from this room is the holdfast old servant's entrance to the western side of the building. At that moment, Iger's image winks onto your comm link with a crackling sound. What's going on down there, rookie? Talk to me. Monica's down, Iger. The vault was a setup. A what? No time to explain. We'll be exiting via an old servant's entrance to the west of the main grounds. I need to keep that exit clear. Roger that. What is the play, Jack the Rigger? Our escape route will open in a minute. We hold tight till then. By hold tight, you mean sit here and fry anyone who comes through the door, don't you? Pretty much. <laughs> I can do that. <sighs> I thought so. When the door locks disarm, we make a break for it. Until then, we make them pay for Monica. Survive for ten turns. Ugh. Gross. summon that thing at least next turn. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Hmm. Okay, Diedrich, do your thing. Oh yeah, she's still hasted. Awesome. Nice. 
Okay, so I am slightly injured, but oh well. Take out this dude, Glory. Hate shamans. Wait, was that a neutral turn? The figure loping towards you is big, even for an orc. The majority of his body is sheathed in a suit of heavy overlapping plates, but you can see if his face looks raw and slick, like old scar tissues stretched tight over his skull. He wears an expression of supreme confidence. Alright friends, playtime's over! All you shadow runners are the same, skulking, sneaking, steal a vase or two from the museum, no harm, maybe I'd let you scamper away into the night. But now it's too late for that sort of generosity. Visitors aren't welcome down here. Drop your weapons and surrender. That's military grade armor he's wearing, Jack the Rigger. Hardened against small arms fire. We'll have a tough time getting through it. Captain. <laughs> I'm less concerned about the armor than I am about that minigun. Those things can tear a man in half. You have three seconds before I open the hose. Step out here and surrender, and I promise I'll make this easy. Something tells me you're going to kill us either way. <laughs> True, I can't deny it. But wouldn't it be easier if you didn't fight back? All right. Six turns I have to survive. Ugh. with them with glory or I don't actually know what to do. Let's get under some good cover. I have grenades. That's what we do. We wait and we throw a grenade when he's in rage. Oh, oh geez. Just fall back drone.
What? Who are you? Okay, deep. Give me a haste, please. Get up right in his face. Okay, we have no armor piercing on our hand razors, so maybe we don't. That is a lot of armor. Okay, let's just chill out of here. God, that was a lot of damage. We have to survive one more turn. Back out of there. Okay, escape route clear. Okay, we have to actually still, like, run out of here. I have only one AP? Why? Well, that's no good. Oh, because of this thing. leave Dietrich all by himself. Turn. I knew this was gonna happen. I fucking knew it. Um, 
The run was a trap. Oh, it was, was it? We can talk about this later. For now, we've got to get the hell out of here. It's only a matter of time before one of them come, uh, before more of them come pouring out of that exit. Pile in, people, and jack the rigger. When we get back to the cruise cruise bazaar, we're gonna have a little talk. Kreuzberg or Kreuzberg? I don't actually know. Kreuzberg is what I'm going to say. Home to nearly half a million people, and until very recently, Monica Schaefer. Once a melting pot of cultural diversity, it's now a chaotic mess of wealth and poverty, crime and commerce, anarchy and control. It's also home to your own little slice of Berlin, a neighborhood that calls, that locals call the Cruise Bazaar, a safe port in the eye of a storm. The ride back to the Cruise Bazaar is quiet. I'm just going to call it the KB. The ride back to the KB is quiet. No one is in a talking mood. As the van veers past potholes and garbage piles, the glare of streetlights and neon signs plays across your window, painting the world in a kaleidoscope of garish colors. Soon, the van rounds a corner and skids to a halt in a narrow, crumbling alley. This is as far as Berlin's chaotic streets will take you. Your team wordlessly debarks the vehicle and climbs down into a disused section of the Yuvon tunnel system, a well-kept secret providing your team safe passage to the KB. Your safe house waits on the other side. Step inside, and the squalor of the disused U-Bahn tunnel gives way to the warmth of your safe house. A man waits inside, silhouetted against the dim fluorescent lighting. Something bad's happened, hasn't it? He steps forward, revealing a pale and expressionless face, light glinting off steel-rimmed glasses. Paul Amsel, your team's fixer and landlord, part dealmaker, part information broker, and one of the most well-connected men in Berlin. His eyes sweep across the team as he takes it all in. The grim faces, the hard stares, Iger's fury, and Monica's absence. I had a feeling. How did she... <sighs> How'd it happen? Something in the vault security system got her while she jacked in. It was over... No, let's... The run was a setup. One minute she was cracking the safe, the next she was on the ground, screaming. I've seen Monica hit black ice before. This was... this was something worse. Monica died of a biofeedback-induced stroke. That's right, and this idiot stood by and let it happen. That's bullshit, Iger. You weren't even in the room. No, I, I wasn't there, and that's exactly the problem. If I'd been in your place, Monica would still be alive and with us. Instead, I left her with you, and now my friend's a corpse in a basement. Look, Iger, Jack the Rigger's right. You weren't stuck in that basement with us. You don't know how things went down in there. So do us all a favor and shut it down, okay? Shut it down? Fuck that. I respect you, Dietrich. You know that. But you don't have my training. None of you do. Monica was good. She was the best, right? But she was also overconfident. She treated the job like it was a game. Do that long enough, and you're gonna get burned. If you'd been paying attention, you'd have figured out all this on your own by now. You'd have known that Monica needed watching just as much of that door. Enough, Iger. Enough. How many seconds passed between Monica's first convulsion and her plug getting pulled? Four? Five? Do you know how much damage biofeedback can do to a duck's brain in five seconds? 
I mean, we, we went to pull the plug as quickly as we could. I agree, I don't. You don't have to answer that, of course you know. Monica died while you stood there and watched. This is all your... That's enough. Iger, you and Jack the Rigger can have it out later, but I've had enough. We need to talk action. Our client sent you into something much bigger than he'd led us to believe. I want to know why. Right there with you, this is supposed to be a milk run. Payback isn't the only reason why we need to find them. We saw something back there, something that we weren't supposed to see. It's fair to assume that we are all still in danger. Agreed. And neutralizing that danger, we need to know who we're dealing with. Let's review the events that transpired tonight. The smallest detail could be important, so nothing, uh, so hold nothing back. Michael lived long enough to say name. Fear Schwinger. <laughs> she fought hard to tell us. It must be important. Oh, of course. The Firewing. This is unexpected. You ha you'll have to forgive me. This brings back many unpleasant memories. The Firewing. The most terrible of the great dragons. There are those who would disagree, but they never experience the terror of living in her, sh in her shadow. You are far too young to remember her, of course. But for Germans of my generation, the name Firewing is synonymous with chaos, destruction, and death. The dragons of today are subtle creatures, full of patience and guile. Firewing was not. After her awakening, she went on a four-month rampage that claimed tens of thousands of lives. Those were dark days. Countless men, women, and children were slaughtered, roasted alive in their homes by a creature of legend. No hope for salvation, and no end in sight. It was a horror that you cannot begin to understand. What stopped her? I can't imagine that a rampaging dragon would just go away on its own. Eventually, the Fire Wing was brought down by a man named Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Well, with the help of the Luftwaffe, of course. But it was experimental weapons designed by the Doctor that finally pierced her hide. She fell in a hail of bullets and rocket fire and crashed down in the radioactive wasteland of the, of the Sox. This event was called the Dragonfall. Safe at last from the dragon's wrath, Germany celebrated Vauclair as a hero, our own Siegfried, a modern-day dragon slayer. My own family practically worshipped the man. If the dragon falls as important an event as you make it out to be, I'm surprised I've never heard of it. Those early years of the awakening were traumatic, Iger. Not just on a national level, but on a global scale. New species of awakened animals were being discovered daily. Within two years of the Dragonfall, the active use of magic had returned to the world, a new source of terror for the bewildered public. And in 2021, the sudden emergence of orcs and trolls gave rise to yet another wave of global panic. In light of such turmoil, is it any surprise that Dr. Vauclair and the Firewing were forgotten? Dragons were yesterday's news. Again, though, all of this happened decades ago. To the best of my knowledge, the story of Firewing is a bit of historical trivia and nothing more. Well, all right, so about Monica. Uh, so, so Monica spent her dying breath trying to tell us about a long dead dragon. Any ideas as to why? No, it doesn't make any more sense to me than it does to you. The Dragonfall is ancient history. Firewing has been dead and gone for 42 years. But there's one thing I do know. Whatever Monica saw, whatever she was trying to tell us, it was important. I will look into this and I will find answers. In the meantime, did you turn up anything else of value? After everything went to hell, we were confronted by an orc in military-grade armor. He appeared to be the head of security. 
Well, that is not much to go on. Do any details about this orc come into mind? Any distinguishing features that I could look into? He was an older guy, for one. From the sound of his voice, I'm guessing mid to late 40s. Pretty old for an orc. And he had skin grafts. Most of his face looked like replacement material. If the grafts came from a legitimate hospital, there may be medical records. That is something. I will see what I can find out. Did you note anything else during the run that may be of value? The estate was just a front for whatever was going on in the basement. That much is clear. It wasn't a minor enterprise either. That facility looks... Uh, took serious funds to build. And time. There was more to it than we saw. Places like that don't spring up overnight. And all in secret, the owners, whoever they may be, were none too pleased by your escape, I'm sure. What else did you find? That's all. Well, that's not much. It is thin, I agree. A basement, a middle-aged orc with skin grafts, and a long-forgotten world event. Whoever set us, whoever sent us, knew that we were walking into a trap. We were set up. Well, that's obvious, but why? I, I warned her. I told her not to take this run, but she assured me it would be a cakewalk. You mean you didn't bring it to her? No, she set up the whole thing herself. Monica was approached recently by a man who calls himself Green Winters. He used to be a prominent activist in the F-State political scene. I've never much liked the man, and I certainly never trusted him. But Monica, she would do anything for her cause, anything for the Flux State. Winters swore that the data he was after was crucial to ensuring the future stability of the Flux. And that was all it took. Sounds like Green Winters is our best lead then. Yes, most definitely. It is clear that Green Winters has involved us in something much larger than he led Monica to believe. When he finds out what happened on the run, he's probably gonna rabbit. it. We need to chase him down before that happens. So how do we find this guy? There's a man here in the KB, a Turk named Altug Barakzi. He owns a little soy cap shop just down the way called Cafe C. This man also is a purveyor of information. I've done business with him from time to time. And you think he'd know something about Green Winters? When I discovered Monica's renewed association with Green Winters, I contacted Altug. One of his people has been keeping tabs on Winters ever since. As I said, I did not trust the man. Pragmatic. Sounds like it's about time I pay Altug a visit. Yes, tell him I sent you. I will do what I can to dig into the information that you've uncovered already, sparse though it may be. Sweet. Oh, it's a pup, 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 puppy! As you start towards the safe house door, a large four-legged form steps around the corner. Dante, Monica's dog, an enormous mongrel of indeterminate breed. A low whimper emerges as he enters the room, head hanging low. That's a wide dog. Oh shit, Dante. Don't worry, boy. We'll look after you. He started whimpering about an hour ago. Turned into a full-blown howl. Wouldn't stop. Kept... That's when I realized something bad had happened. Oh, looking down into those huge brown eyes, you see intelligence and sadness. He lets out a small whine and rubs his head against you. Yeah, let's give him a, a bit of a scratch. Dante leans into you and looks up mournfully, pressing his ribs against your leg. 
I guess the dog's going with you, Jack the Rigger. Well, perhaps a part of Monica lives on in Dante. Return to the safe house when you're finished with Altuk, my, fr my friend. With a little luck, he can help us locate Green Winters, and we can get to the bottom of this. And now, I think we should all take a moment for Monica. Is this my stash? Yes. I got a big pupper. Let's talk to Glory. Glory is beautiful in a waifish sort of way. Her features are almost elvish in their delicacy, but there's something cold about her that you find slightly unsettling. What's more unsettling is her chrome. Glory is rocking a heavy load out of cyberware from head to toe. She looks to be composed more of plastic and metal than she is of skin and bone. In the shadows, individuals such as this are anything but uncommon. But Gloria's cyberware is first generation, all of it. Bulky, invasive, practically museum pieces. This chrome was obsolete well before she was born. Jack the Rigger, can I help you? Hey, Glory, how you holding up? Don't worry about me, I'm solid. If you say you're good, you're good. I trust you. Any thoughts what we should do next? We should find our missing client, extract some answers. Beyond that, find another Decker. Monica won't be easy to replace. Best start looking now. leave her alone. Let's go uh, make friends with Agar. Something I can do for you, fearless leader? We need to talk about Monica. Not right now we don't. Don't push me on this, Jack. One of these days, we're gonna hash this out, and you can talk all you like about the clusterfuck that killed one of my best friends, but it won't be today. Fair enough, but before I go, I have something else to say. Spit it out, then. Let's hear it. You're wrong about me, Agar. I intend to prove that to you. Best of, best of luck with that, Jack. Now please, leave me alone. Alright. She's super pissed with me. Dietrich turns his head as you approach. His aging face is traced with a network of faint scars, the legacy of too many fights over too many years. While he still retains a degree of strength and vigor, it's obvious that the shaman you see today is a shadow of his former self. Despite all of this, there's still an aura of power surrounding the man. He raises his bottle, offering it to you. Jack the Rigger, welcome. I've got a bunch of schnapps that need sharing. We've got a fallen comrade to drink to. Yeah, okay. The liquor in the bottle is crystal clear, and as you raise it, you catch an intoxicating whiff of cloves and caramel. It tastes of sweet corn and walnuts with a lingering aftertaste of buttery toffee. You swallow a swig, then return the bottle to Dietrich's outstretched hand. He takes a long pull on the bottle, then locks eyes with you. Let me ask you a question, Jack. What made you choose to come to Berlin? I'd rather not talk about it. 
I can appreciate that, boss. Honestly, I can. All the same, if you're going to be calling the shots from this point on, I need to know what kind of man you are. member of my old crew betrayed me. Well, ain't that a pisser. I can't handle all, I can handle all sorts of things, but betrayal always makes me see red. Extenuating circumstances. If he didn't do what he did, his family would have paid the price. That's rough, but it's still on him, not you. He should have been more careful. What did you do? Okay, so there isn't like we're just making up our backstory right now. There isn't like a canonical backstory that we're like lying about or anything. What could I do? I faked my own death. It was the only way to save his family. Would have been my choice, but good on you, I suppose. But all the same, Jack. Saints don't tend to last long in this line of work. Trust me, I've watched enough of them buy it to know. So you faked your own death, bailed on the rest of your team, and made your way here to Berlin. Am I getting that right? More or less, but there wasn't much left for me in the Ruplex, and Monica made a hell of an offer. Ah, oh, yes, Monica. It all comes back to our girl, doesn't it? So let me ask you, just what was your relationship with Monica anyway? I know you two knew each other way back, but she was pretty coy about these things. Uh, are you always this inquisitive? Yeah, I suppose I am. My life's an open book, so I guess I just sort of figure everyone else's will be too. So how about it? You want to fill me in? Uh, we were very close. Figure as much, not from anything you or Monica said. I just had a suspicion. Well anyway, good on you both. She was a wonderful woman, and I hope your time together was happy. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time, and the bottle's almost empty. Thanks for taking the time to talk. For what it's worth, I'm happy you're here with us. Rest in peace, Monica. We'll miss you, girl. Alrighty. What is this room? Oh, let's talk to Paul. Jack the Rigger, did you get the information about Green Winters? No. No, not yet. Okay. Let's go find out about Green Winters. With the big pupper. I have a Doberman and a big pupper. Oh, I just realized. There we go. So 
where is this cafe? Oh, it's down that way. Okay. So we have a U-Bahn platform. Can we just randomly go down here? Neat. Samuel Beckenbauer. At the sound of your approach, the orc turns to face you. He wears, wears a severe expression, but there's a kindness in his eyes. Guten Tag, Elf. Can I help you with something? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. I take it you run a charity of some sort? Yeah, it isn't much, but we do what we can. Such as? Give me the specifics. In the past several years, I've established a shelter where the dispossessed can sleep, a soup kitchen to feed the hungry, and a library for the people of the KB to better themselves. Okay, so we run... Okay, he's a cool dude. It's a lot of text. I don't want to read it all like that. Oh, okay. There's 15 orcs and trolls. So this guy, he's going to be the bad guy, isn't he? this lane guy. Oh, he is an ugly troll. Before you stands a troll, though it may be a stretch to say he is standing at all. His great mass is barely held upright by two vintage prosthetic legs, along with a crutch under one arm. His body clicks and hums with every shift of his weight. Despite these disabilities, his eyes are sharp and calculating. Well, I mean, one of them looks like it's, like, yellowed over, but... I know you. Um, I should I should hope so. One of Monica's runners, then, is it? Few others wield an ego that big. I'm Jack the Rigger, by the way. Good to meet you, Jack. Name's Alexi Lane. What's your place in the KB? No place, really. Just an old relic, rusting away. There's something you should know about Monica. Something happened to her on that run. I'm afraid so. There have already been whispers. I had a feeling besides. Monica almost always comes around here uh, to check on everybody. She's long overdue. And now here you are in her, in her place. So she's either severely wounded or outright dead. Which is it? She's dead. Now that's a shame. She was a hell of a runner, that one. And a good friend. Okay. No, oh, this is one of the same trees from the previous one. Zack Flash. Oh, he sells magic? This elf has clearly seen better days. His skin is weathered and emaciated, as though it's been stretched too tightly over his frame. Track marks line the crooks of his arms, and dirty bandages wrap his knuckles. Despite all of this, he seems cheerful enough. The elf fixes his twinkling, bugged-out eyes on yours and offers you a broad smile, displaying a set of impossibly white teeth. When he speaks to you, his voice is surprisingly deep. Guten Tag, my friend. You here for some magic because Zack Flash is your magic man. Yeah, 
Yeah, give me, show, show, show me your magic. Well then, I might be able to help you. It's uh, as deep as I think I can go. <laughs> yeah, what have you got? Oh, show me your wares. So he just sells drugs. Got it. There's a cyber clinic. Let's just show me your wares. I do need some medical supplies. Yeah, those will do. Sweet. We don't need um, any cyberware just yet. I don't even think I can afford any just yet. Is there someone who sells drones? That's what I need. Oh, a Romani Patriarch. The Romani Patriarch is an impressive figure, an enormous man in his late 60s, burly and broad-chested despite his age. His voice is deep and resonant, and his breath is heavy with the scent of pipe tobacco. Taven Backstyle Elf. You're here to conduct some business? If so, I welcome you to met back arms and ammunition. If not, keep right on walking. Yeah, show me the goods, baby. Oh, he doesn't sell drones! That's garbage. Could get some sweet armored clothing, though. I buy drones from. Am I just stealing her bag or am I putting a coin in? Alright, okay, let's toss a coin to uh, to our witcher. Who are you? David, you look pretty shady. A pair of round eyes peer out, up at you from under the hood of a grime-smeared winter coat. You recognize him as David, one of the KB's street kids. If you had to guess, you'd place him in his mid-teens, though it's difficult to tell beneath the grime and acne marring his face. You've seen him following Monica around between runs, chasing her heels like a lost puppy. She always seemed to have a soft spot for the kid. Oh hoy, Jack the Rigger, have you seen Monica around? I've been looking all over for her. Um, she's dead. <laughs> it was horrible. There was blood everywhere. Look, I I think I wanna be alone right now. Sorry, kid. <laughs> that was mean. Do you sell drones? The dwarvish tech vendor smiles at you with practiced ease, her almond eyes twinkling with the glare from a dozen trid screens. She speaks in a clipped, heavily accented German. Welcome to the data haven. Can I help you with something? I need some tech. Give me that tech. Drones are too expensive. But I could become a courier, so I will. Um, 
Sweet. Guess we're just going uh, in for a coffee now. Oh, there's even more to walk to? No, oh, okay, no, I didn't see that fence there. Let's talk to Jan. Hello, my friend. A fine day for a soy cough, yes? Every day is a fine day. Don't mind the fool in the chair. He roars like a traumatized walrus, stewing all day in his own sweat. I tolerate him only because he takes his sword calf by the bucket. Ah, old Tug, my friend. You are as quick-witted and sharp-tongued as ever. I bow to you. To bow to me, you'd first have to vacate your chair. I shall summon a team of determined young men and an ox to assist you with the task. With luck, you'll be on your feet by nightfall. Um... Enough of this senseless bickering. You've approached me for a reason, yes? Tell me, what can Jan Goldschmidt do for you? Uh, nothing. Later. The man behind the counter looks right past you and at the dog, following close behind. Dante, I'll fetch his water dish and perhaps a coffee for our friend here. Soy calf, black. <laughs> the Turk looks disgusted. Very well, a soy calf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul Amsel sends his regards. Ah, uh, very good. Please express to Herr Amsel my appreciation of his patronage. Patronage. If he needs any more catering jobs seen to in the future, I'm always happy to provide. tells me you're developing the menu for a friend of his now. Herr Winters, I believe. I want to hear all about it. Yes, yes, of course, so wise one. Kami, come. Kami? Kami? I don't know. A young woman bustles in from the back room. Her gum chewing is loud enough to hear over the noise of the coffee grinders. Barak Ghazi spits something out in a rapid-fire Turkish. As you wish, Uncle. I'll see to it right away. Cammy offers you a shy grin, snaps her gum, and hurries back into the room that she came from. My girl Cammy is arranging to make contact with the chef as we speak. This will likely take some time. My chef is a busy man. While we wait, I wonder if you'd be so kind as to run a small errand for me. A trifle, really. I hate to trouble you. I'm embarrassed to even ask but I'd be most appreciative of your help. Of course. The errand is simple, hardly worthy of you. I have installed a number of data taps to Berlin's fiber optic network. As part of my civic duty, you understand. These taps provide free matrix access for all who live in the KB. In order to maintain their... their anonymity, each tap's protocol buffer must be reset every few days. I simply wish for you to visit each data tap and reset it. Alright. Yes, yes, it's a simple job. Time-consuming and a bit tedious, perhaps, but simple. Just reset the taps and come back when you're finished. There should be three of them scattered around this neighborhood. The first one's just that side. Look for a metal box with yellow arrows painted atop it. Alright, let's get going.
Aha. Uh -huh. That's what they look like. Talismonger shop. So this is the actual magic shop in here. Oh, that looks like, um... Algernon. Okay, this is, this is Algernon's shop. Welcome back, friend. Algernon extends a hand to help you to your feet. Absinthe shifts slightly to allow you to stand. But what was that? What happened? My fault. My apologies. Sometimes when I daydream, I bring others along for the ride. It was unintentional, yes. But there's no harm done, correct? You'll be fine. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't actually want any magic stuff. I won't ever be back in this shop ever again, so. So where is another one of those boxes? Wait, who's that? Simmy? I didn't talk to Simmy before. I didn't go up here at all. Warming herself in the dim light of a dying street lamp is a waif of a girl who looks far too worn for years. The Mother Superior, she says there will be seven for me to care for. I need to see them. Seven what? What do you have to care for? The Captain's children, Mother Superior, says there are seven. She says I'm to be governess to the children. You notice a chipjack poking out beneath the young woman's unruly hair. The vacant look in her eyes marks her as a likely BTL junkie. Lost between reality and a number of better-than-life virtual constructs. I need to get money back to them. Look, do you know Monica? Monica? Is she one of the sisters at the Abbey? No, wait. Monica. Yes, Monica. She is good to me. Brings me food to eat, tea to drink. Not anymore. <laughs> She died? That's right. Huh? I don't like this, but I can't switch it off. She will go to heaven, she told me. It is a place for good people, stillborn babies, and childhood pets. And she was a childhood pet. <laughs> the girl then begins to mumble to herself. Okay, later. Yes, good. I need to rejoin the children. What is this statue? Oh no, this phone's ringing. A bizarre monument towers, towers before you. At the top of the pedestal, the form of an angel stands, its outstretched wings looming over the small park. But the material is strange and uneven, giving the statue a cold Frankenstein-esque appearance. It appears that the artist has welded this monument together from various metal scraps and pieces of junk. As you approach, a small grimy monitor at the base of the statue flickers dimly to life, and the grain, grainy face of a smug young orc appears on screen. 
Um. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't want to know anything from Statue AI. Yeah, let's answer the phone. It's an old, obsolete phone booth. It's ringing. A monotone, pitch-adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediate, immediately. The Shockwell and Writer's contact for this keys is no more. Jack the Rigger is listed as a follow-up contact. This is our only secured line to this keys. Please listen to the following instructions carefully, if you are a supporter of our cause. We have phone booths in strategic locations throughout the city. Within each one, you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can attain a copy of this information, return here and submit it via the port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information remotely and post an undoctored copy of it onto the Matrix ourselves. It is our stated goal for this information to remain free to all. However, you will be compensated for sought-after information returned to this location. I'll keep an eye out. Sweet. As you're resetting the data tap, you notice that someone has duct taped a small homemade receiver to the system. An earplug dangles from the receiver. The sounds of heavy machinery make it difficult to hear the words that are being spoken. After a moment, you find you can make out two distinct voices, a nasal woman who sounds like a heavy smoker, and a man who speaks in a high-pitched, breathy tone. Just heard, Monica, need to verify. Good for us. Oh wait, high-pitched man. Good for us. <laughs> A sound like a conveyor belt starting adds to the noise of machinery. You can make out you can't make out anything else until it comes to a stop a minute later. Think our next step Wait, isn't ready to make a move yet. To be patient. See who steps up. Could be someone more. More conveyor belts start up. All you can hear is the sound of machinery. Some sort of motorized vehicle starts up drowning out everything else. A bell rings loudly again and again. It sounds like a telephone. You hear the sound of a door slamming shut, and the noise of machinery is suddenly muffled. There's a rattle of plastic, and the ringing stops. The nasal woman's voice can be heard again in a sing-song tone. Guten Tag, how may I help you? Her tone changes, becomes more businesslike. I heard. Yes, he knows. I told him it wasn't time to make a move yet. What, do you think I'm an idiot? The council needs to meet again. I know, getting everyone in the same room is challenging. Getting them to agree on a course of action is going to be even more challenging. From my perspective, the KB was only stable because of her. If she really is out of the way, well, we'll see, won't we? Yeah, I know, I know. What can I say? Things go slow in the flux, sometimes. You hear the sound of a door opening again, and the cacophony of machinery fills the line. You can't make out anything more. Interesting. Let's get all the way back here. Run! What is this menu? Let's look at the menu. Caramel soy calf. <laughs> Welcome back, honored Effendim. How may I serve you? I finished your little trifle. Ah, very good. I assume you had no difficulties. Difficulties, no. But one of the taps had been modified a bit. Someone was using it as a surveillance device. Of course they were. I would be surprised if they weren't. This is Berlin, after all. In the flux, everyone spies. If you do not spy, how will you know who's in power and who will be in power next? If you're to stay here, Effendim, you must get used to it. Who enters the Turkish bath will sweat, as my uncle Tatomir always says. Nevertheless, I shall have one of my people look into it. Wait. There's more. I listened in on the tap and heard something. It might be important. 
Oh, tell me, O oh listener of keyholes, what did you hear on the surveillance tap you found? I couldn't make out much, a nasal woman and a high-pitched man. They seemed pleased Monica was out of the picture. News travels fast in Berlin. These two are known to me. Is there more? The woman got a call. She talked about a council meeting tonight to decide if they should make a move. Then she was drowned out by heavy machinery. Most excellent. It is indeed fortuitous that you discovered this information, though it is not unexpected. I will have one of my people attend to this council meeting and report back. Yeah, keep me in the loop, baby. With that out of the way, let us return to our pressing business. The menu for Air Amsel, uncle? Please extend my consolations to him. The death of Fräulein Schaefer must have hit him hard. Please express my condolences as well. I only just heard the news. Monica was an important part of this community. Few know how important. The memory stick Cammy just handed you should contain all the information Air Amsel required from our chief, our chef in the field. Should you require my services in the future, you know where to find me. Until then, good day. Sweet. Okay, let's talk about no. Screw coffee. I just drink soy calf. Jack the Rigger, did you get the information about Green Winters? Yeah, I spoke to Altuck. He gave him his memory stick. Let us see what his agent has to say. Brock Ghazi's agent tailed Green Winters to a hotel in a cesspool of a keys called Drogen Kipper. This hotel is called Das Kessel House. It is a renovated factory nestled deep in the heart of Drogon Keeper. It appears that Winters is holed up in there. Recently, there was some contention between two gangs over control of this neighborhood. Due to the gang violence, the agent refused to follow Winters inside of the hotel, but he confirms that he is still inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Gear up, people. We have a hotel to raid. Just a moment, Iger. You are an excellent soldier, and nobody questions your competence in the field. Your loyalty to this team is equally commendable. That said, we believe that Jack the Rigger is the right choice to lead the team. What? <laughs> Don't mistake this decision for a reprimand. Monica considered your contributions to the team to be invaluable. But we all know she wasn't comfortable putting a soldier in charge. Well, this is unbelievable. You want to put the rookie in charge? Again? Don't you people learn from your mistakes? Jack the Rigger is the reason we're still alive, Iger. He kept us together. He let us out of there in one piece. Making him your golden boy. This is more of your flux state idiocy at work, isn't it? It's what Monica believed in. Yeah, and look where that got her. Let me give you a piece of advice. In the field, only two things matter. The mission and survival. Everyone else is a distraction. Your ridiculous politics have no place in the shadow run. What can I say? We're German. We have a history of strong political views. Okay then. Well, screw it. Let's put an end to this. I've got the skill and experience to lead this team. Jack the Rigger, on the other hand, he was appointed by Monica as a joke. If you'd rather he take the lead, I'll abide by that. But I want to hear each of you say it. Um. Uh, 
They already have. You just weren't listening. You stay out of this. Oh. Good dog. I think we've heard what Dante has to say. As for my part, Jack the Rigger saved our lives back there. You may not believe it, but he did. The way I see it, that means I'll follow his lead a while longer. I trust in Monica's judgment, therefore I trust in Jack the Rigger's judgment. The discussion is finished, Iger. Jack the Rigger will take Monica's place as the leader of this team. do whatever it takes to keep, to keep this team and Monica's legacy alive. That includes taking your advice out here. Well, that's mighty big of you. I don't agree with this decision, but I will respect it. Jack the Rigger takes the lead, then conversation closed. It's time to move on. We need to focus on chasing down green winters. That's at your mission computer. Indeed, I've transferred the information that we received from Eltuk to the computer terminal in the next room. It used to be Monica's personal workstation, Jack the Rigger. Now it is yours. Monica kept a variety of notes and dossiers on that machine. I would suggest reviewing her notes when you have the time. Good hunting. I await e eagerly your return. <coughs> I wouldn't suggest driving to Drogon Keeper. The roads aren't safe. Taking the U-Bahn would be faster anyway. U-Bahn it is. Sweet. Good puppy. Your workstation mission computer. If you're reading this, it means I've either died or stepped down. Hopefully the latter, but probably the former. Not many Shadowrunners make it to retirement age. In any case, I'm sure that you'll do a fine job in the role. If you need anything, talk to Paul. He's a good man, and he knows how important it is to me that you take my place. One last thing, Ace. Iker might cause you some problems. In fact, I think it's a fair bet that she already has. Just remember, she brings something to this team that nobody else does. You'll want her on your side. My advice to you is this, hold your own with her. If she pushes you, push back. Don't try and butter her up with flattery. She'll see right through it. Most of all, do what you can to earn her respect. She'll never be satisfied following if you don't give her a better reason than because Monica said so. I have faith in you, Ace. It's up to you to justify that faith. And by the way, Ace, if you botch this, I'm coming back and haunting your ass. I mean that. Alrighty. Ooh, a BBS. Star con Oh, okay, so this is uh from the previous game thing, the Emerald City Ripper. that antiquities delivery schedule. So 
sweet. Paul, a talented and well-connected fixer with contacts all over Berlin. He is more to me than that, of course, but that's neither here nor there. Dietrich, one of my dearest friends and a shaman of tremendous power. A good man to have at your side in a fight. I tend to use Dietrich in a support role, as magic can dramatically bolster the combat effectiveness of a frontline fighter like Iger or Glory. But when the chips are down, he's more than capable of dishing out punishment on his own. Can't think of much else to say about Dietrich, just a good, reliable guy. He is getting a little long in the tooth for a Shadowrunner. I'm not sure how many more years he has ahead of him in this game, but I'll be happy to run with him for as long as he's able. We'll see, I suppose. Glory, our damaged enigma. I've known her for almost five years now, but I don't think I'll ever really know her. Somehow, I doubt that anyone will. On an operational level, Glory is solid. That chrome of hers may be old, but it gets the job done. I've seen her take a troll apart with her hand razors, and when her adrenal pump is running, she moves faster than anyone I've ever seen. On top of all that, Glory is a competent field medic. I don't know where she learned medicine, yet another question mark, but she's patched me up at least a dozen times. Between her skill with a medkit and Dietrich's magic, we haven't had much trouble with serious injuries, and in our line of work, that's a luxury. That's really all that I know about Glory. She keeps herself, barely talks, and spends most of her off time staring at nothing. I've seen this kind of behavior before, of course. Something bad happened in her past. Deep down, I think she's still running from it, and I'm sure that her cyberware ties into it somehow. I don't know, maybe someday she'll open up to me. I'd like to think that she will. We'll see, I suppose. Iger. What to say about Iger? She's smart, she's strong, and she's one hell of a soldier. In a close-up fight, I've seen her take apart an entire security team with her shotgun, and she's even more dangerous at range. It's a handy thing, having a trained sniper on the team. All in all, we enjoy one hell of an advantage, thanks to her. Unfortunately, there are some disadvantages too. All of that military training has left her, how to say it, rigid, I suppose? Unlike the others, Iger isn't content to go with the flow. She wants lists, and maps, and timetables. She wants a hierarchy, and she wants it formalized. I don't think that she realizes it, but giving her what she wants would destroy this team. Glory and Dietrich wouldn't put up with it for more than a day or two. I know I wouldn't. But she keeps on pushing, all the same. One of these days, the situation's gonna come to a head. I just hope that doesn't happen soon. Jack the Rigger, my secret weapon. I've run enough with Jack the Rigger to know that he is trustworthy, good in a fight too, but beyond all of that, it's good just to see him again. There aren't many people left from the old days, far too few, and Jack the Rigger, well, he was always the best of them. God, that was sappy. At any rate, if anything happens to me, it's good to know that he'll be on hand to fill my shoes. It's not what Iger would want, but it's what would be best for the team. All right, files have been read. Okay, let's save. Let's go to the U-Bahn. This <sighs> doesn't matter which entrance we go in. Uh, you are leaving a controlled sector.
Assemble a team and travel to Das Kesselhaus Hotel to search for green winters. Hello, game? Das Kesselhaus Hotel and Nightclub, crown jewel of Drogen Kippa. The filthiest keys in Berlin. Opening the door to the ground level dance club is like bashing your head into a wall of sound. Flashing lights stab your eyes, and the air is perfumed with cheap synthahol and engine grease. Everything in here is cranked up to eleven, a playground for the numb. Green Winters is somewhere in this building. You seal yourself for the sensory assault and step inside. The team makes a quick check of their weapons and follows you into Das Kessel House. Um... Okay, I can... Okay, awesome, it automatically fills her stuff back in. It doesn't really look like she's wearing a leather jacket, but... But sure. The troll working the door might be the shortest you've ever seen, and the thickest. And despite the pounding music and the writhing bodies, his face is buried in a comic book. He looks up, gives you a cursor once over in size. Welcome to Dust Castle House, now under new management, again. There's no cover, just go on in and get your fix. That's Kroner at the bar over there, he'll take care of you. Just play nice, so you'll meet Air Zap. Have fun. Ooh. Do I look like a front desk clerk? Hotel's closed. Renovations. You want somewhere to crash? Go somewhere else. music out here on the floor is way too loud for comfort. The scene going down at the bar is even louder. A dealer on duty stands impassively behind the bar. A desperate looking young woman is pleading with him, apparently to little effect. All right, Silka, you're gonna have to explain. I'm gonna explain how this works to you one more time. I get my cash and you get your cram. No crash, no cram, period. But I need it, Kroner. Come on. And I have cash. I totally do. It's up in my room. But you guys won't let me up there to get it. Hotel's under new management, beautiful. You don't have a room anymore. Whoever was up there, you might as well forget about it. But that was, but that was all I had. And you know, I have to get right. Soon. Well, maybe we could work out a trade. Cram for services. Services? Come on, Kroner. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Do you want the cram or not? That ain't gonna happen, Chummer. Not now, not ever. I'll give you about an hour and a half, uh, or half an hour before the shake set in. When that happens, you know where to find me. Gross. Leave me alone, okay? I've got problems to deal with.
cram habits are rough than shake. I know a place I can help you get clean if you're interested. Who like, who said I want to shake anything? Look around you. Like what you see? Of course you don't. My life's better on cram. Why would I ever want to stop? Ooh. Yeah, you want to end up working for that guy? I'll tell you the same thing I told him. That ain't gonna happen. Maybe not, but in order to keep feeding your habit, you're eventually gonna wind up doing something you regret. Trust me on this. Stop it, please. Just stop, okay? I don't need your help, and I don't want it. You're near rock, bo rock bottom, Silky. When you hit it, there'll be nowhere to go but up. Yeah, maybe so, but what makes you think you're the one to help me? What makes you think anyone can? Experience, but nobody can help you if you're not ready to help yourself. If you want people like Kroner out of your life forever, you think about it. Well, you've said it. It makes a lot of sense. And you're right. I need help. I, uh, I'll take you up on your aunt's offer. I should probably tell you, I've tried to clean up before. Lots of times. Never really worked out. Take the tube to the KB, go to the... K yeah. Look for a man named Samuel Beckenbauer. He can help you. Sweet. It's about time I left this place behind. If I never see another kroner again, it'll be too soon for me. Wish I'd get my stuff back from my room first, though. Stupid gang closing the whole, whole hotel. Yeah, sounds like they stole your shit. Answer some questions and I'll help you get it back. Really? That'd be, well, that'd be incredible. I really need that money. I'll have some things up there too, you know, personal stuff. My stuff should be in room 304. That's where me, Nadja, and Sarah were staying until, well, you know. I'll be waiting right here when you get back down. Room 304, got it. They're bad guys. I mean, like, real bad guys. The gang that used to run this place wasn't all that bad. They kept the cram flowing and the prices weren't too high. They never hassled me as long as I kept buying. The new guys killed them all when they took over. I'm stuck to re dealing with assholes like Kroner. The floor manager, Frank, had a thing for my girl, Sarah. He was always coming on to her, no matter how many times she told him no. I haven't seen her since the takeover, but he won't stop asking me about her. The guys are real creep. That's about all I can think of. I steer clear of the new guys when I can. I shouldn't have to tell you why. Uh huh. Second floor security station, lots of high tech, awesome. And a vault up in the penthouse, okay. Okay, let's go talk to Frankie. Oh, what is over here? Electrical panel. Okay, so that's a cool option. Let's swap this Kroner asshole. Garbage.
Pinned to the floor, Mandrew's too expensive for this neighborhood and too baggy to be in his suit is a name tag. Frank. Or, too, yeah, too baggy to be his suit. Yeah, what you need. Sarah needs your elevator key. She says it's important. Sarah, she needs them from me? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I uh, can't leave the floor on duty and all. I uh, can't just hand over the key. I can open the elevator back up, though, and you can let her know. Sure. Elevator's open. When you see Sarah, tell her that I'm glad she's okay, right? Make sure she gets it that it's me helping her. Sure thing, Frankie. Oh, party girl. Who are you? Hey, good looking. Wanna party? Drug or is it alcohol? I don't even know. Sounds like a drug, though. Get to 304 without causing too much of a kerfluffle. Do not open. Don't they know that just makes me want to open it? That is a huge stuffed bear. Where the hell am I putting that? Oh, okay. This connects to one of the other floors, I guess, right? Like this big hole? Okay, we'll do that in a sec. Okay, I don't know what the code is. So even though it says not to open it, I kind of think we have to open it, right? It's going to be filled with zombies. Ooh. Oh no, it's a scorpine. Scorpine? Pretty tough. Oh, it's heavily armored. Haste.
the tunnel. His food's in the crisper drawer. See you next week, Steven. Oh, was that someone's pet? Oh, well now I just feel like an asshole. Yeah, this is like a huge doggy bed for the scorpion. I mean, there are a pile of, like, human remains in here, so... Maybe I shouldn't feel too bad, but... I do feel pretty bad, though. Let's hop down to the second floor. Please don't hurt me, I'm just a line cook. If you let me go, I won't tell anyone, I promise. What are you so afraid of? Wait, you're not with those guys out there? I I just thought... Take your time. I thought you were one of them. You know, the gangers that took over and shot up the place. I work... That is to say, I worked... I worked for the previous owners. When the shooting started, I shut myself in here. They, they haven't figured out how to override my keys yet. It's been a day and a half. I don't know how much longer I can stay in here. Oh, that's the head chef, Felix. He took a hit to the chest when they raided this floor. I thought I could stop the bleeding, but I couldn't. Okay, tell me what you can. There's some sort of chop shop up in room 401, like low-level street dock stuff. I had to deliver room service there one day when we were short-staffed. What I saw when they opened the door scared the dreck out of me. People hooked up to tubes and stuff. Door code was 5870. I'm gonna write that down. I don't know if this is a game where I need to write things down, but it's good to do anyways. Oh, did I spill water all over this? What happened to this? No, oh, I just got ink everywhere. 5870. Cool. Uh, yeah, we'll help him. Nothing. Food, I guess. Ugh. So, okay, once we unlock this, there's no stony enemies, I'm assuming. You can go chill in the back. Glory. You can chill right here. Dietrich, you're fine where you are. Me, I'll chill here. Oh, are they not coming out?
Can I shoot the sparrow? Ooh, I can. Uh, but I won't. No, I will. That was fun. I'm sorry, Glory. I had to do it. Barrel justice. Oh, that's a lot more people than I thought. I need to get Glory out of there. In the open. Big mistake. HR Serve Hotel Registration and Security Services, version 1.1. Guess register by name. Green Winters. Floor 4, 405. Guy in the master suite on 4 asked for his room code to be changed again. Oh, okay. Look up Silky. Silky Schroeder, Sarah Newman, Nodger Bauer. Okay, preferred customer. Great. Uh, so, what about 302? What about Scorpion, dude? No? Tenant Vandal. Was there a 306? No, okay. Admin password, okay.
I kind of just want to explore. Ugh. This is where I'm assuming their not preferred customers are. Safe. I don't know the code to. Okay, but I've got a few bucks anyway. Gross. Trauma kit, okay. Is there anything in the bathroom? Why did floor three have a code on the this is the bathroom, right? Okay, okay, okay. I know it. He's up to something. Like I heard him today talking about that guy who works in the kitchen. Asking him where the cleaning supplies was at. I've seen Eddie's room. That dude never cleaned a day in his life. I'm gonna follow him tomorrow and figure out what his deal is. Maybe it's just selling mouthwash to the hobos a block down in the old bus depot. Ha ha ha. I knew it, Fraggin' Eddie. I saw him yesterday. I was up on the third floor because the vending machine down here was out of soy calf. So he came up and he went over to the out-of-order latrine. He punched in the code. Didn't know I was watching, did you, Eddie? Well, I ain't so stupid. He put in 2478. Now we can go to the bathroom. Third floor. What are you hiding in this bathroom, Eddie? Is that not uh, two four seven eight? Oh, is this his meth lab? It's jazz lab. Oh, what's this? Go to the penthouse first. That's kind of what I want to do. And we'll go visit Green Winters. Hey, will you grab me a can? Yeah. Okay, so we need another code. Double mag lock. So 
Maybe I'm not doing anything on the badass level yet. What a weird bathroom, though. So, it's like a public bathroom, but with like a not public looking shower in it. Maybe we'll be able to like tunnel up from somewhere on um, the fourth floor. So 405 is our buddy. Now which of these floors is the 5870? Let's just try it. 5870. Oh, I'm in combat, though. See that guy. Crap. Okay, we need to heal Gloria. Um, yeah, sure, we'll just use the weak heal. This stuff we can interact with. The events met. Oh, okay, yeah, we want this. I probably need to use my drone repair kit. Oh, I guess not. He automatically healed up, I guess. Injector hyper. A schematic? Does that mean we can craft? So, four or five is where Green Winters is at. Let's check everything else. in the 
bathroom here, nothing. Okay, this is the last place. 1989. Interesting, is he in there? Is that his bathroom? He has like servers. Oh no, he's fried too. The scene is eerily familiar. The dead man is still jacked into a smoldering computer, his face contorted into a mask of pain. Blue smoke spills from his data jack, like Monica. There's something else. The man's outline is wrong. It takes a moment for the realization to sink in. His back is bent at an impossible angle. Jesus. Looks like he convulsed hard enough to break his own spine. Is that even possible? You tell me. Okay, so this this is Green Winters then. They should have at least had him wearing like a green shirt instead of blue. This matches the description Altog gave us. It's Green Winters. This what happened to Monica? I suspect that it would have. We jacked her out in time to prevent it. Of a way to go. Yeah, I'm getting that. I've seen biofeedback deaths before, but never anything like this. Oh no, another number to write down? 91612. Serious numbers. I probably didn't need to write that one down. It didn't look like a door code. Hanging on the wall is a large, gaudily framed painting, an unimaginative still life of some kitchen object sitting on a table. Nope, nothing. Oh, okay, let's move all the paintings then. Harz Mountains. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, this must be the code then. 91612. Nine, Inside the safe, you find a bunch of old, well worn media discs. The words, Watch Me, have been hastily written on the back of the topmost disc. Uh, the last two discs in the bundle are stuck together, and when you try to pry them apart, the readable surface. Oh no! Did we just ruin those discs? Oh. Uh, I'm getting a phone call. Who are you? Hey there, Chief. Don't hang up. I've got a proposition for you. I'm listening. You probably noticed this building's under new management, right? And judging by the fresh corpses that I'm seeing strewn all over the hotel, I'm gonna guess you don't like the new guys any better than I do. Well, I'd like to make you an offer. You help cover my escape, and I'll get you into a secure vault on the top floor. Belong to the leader of the gang that used to run this place. Trust me, it's still secure. I set up the security protocols myself. The last decker they brought in to take a crack at it came back out on a stretcher. They haven't found too many volunteers since then. Sure. Uh, unspecified good stuff is in the vault. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a fan of good stuff. 505. Let's go. Let's get the good stuff. Oh. Psst, oh 
over here, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Knew you'd come. I've always been a good judge of character. Since we're meeting in person, I'll formally introduce myself. Blitz, Decker Extraordinaire, at your service. Well, it's just around the corner. Once we get there, I can unlock it with a few clicks on the keypad. Built myself a back door when I wrote the security system. Cool. Let's skadoodle. Oh, we can go into all these doors now. Wow, there's a big room. I Made mean, as a penthouse, I guess. Oh, really? There's nothing in it, though? No loot? Oh, there is loot. Hmm, yes. into a huge lump. Tell me of this achievement, my friend. What is it? Heal more than 30 damage in a single cast of Heal Wound. How did I get that? I didn't cast Heal Wound. What? What? Alright, here we go. Tap, tap, tap. Whoa! Yeah, take cover is right. Holy hell. Ouchies. Trying to take it out, I guess. Nice. Tiger. Nice. Whoa, what the hell is that? Okay, maybe Glory shouldn't have ran into there.
Please don't get killed, Gory. in one hit, I don't think. Good job, Dietrich. Oh, she's hanging in by a thread. Okay, is this not an angry drone? Oh. You're mine now, my friend. Drug formula. That is good stuff. Yeah, that wasn't much in there, Blitz. I'll give you your share of the Nuyen, and you can keep the drugs if you want. Let's get the addle. Commence the skedaddling. Alright, let's give Silky your stuff back. There you go. Of course I did. Leave. Actually, do we have any cram? Can we just give this lady some cram? No, I'm not. I still don't have any. Oh well. Hmm. I 
happy to help. Yeah. Sweet! We have a friend. I'm all about making the friends. Your team makes its way back to the nearest U-Bond station. Twenty minutes later, you're on a return trip to the KB, leaving the filth of Drogon Keeper far behind. But the image of Green Winter's twisted corpse continues to linger in your mind. You lift one of the discs that you pulled from Winter's safe to the light. Reflections dance off its surface. With luck, you'll soon have the answers that you've been looking for. Crew advancement. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh no. Slash followed by a kick. Well, that sounds really cool. Definitely Razor Specialist, right? Just keep going the mage right with him. Oh, this is tough though. Now that I'm looking at it though, I'm not sure this is something I would ever actually use. 2 AP, so at this point costs a whole turn, and it has a 3 cooldown just for more, more to hit. And I guess that helps when using the sniper rifle at short range. But wasting a whole turn of that sounds pretty wasteful. Or is this just one AP? I can do it every other round. Yeah. Silky doing. Sweet. Maybe he isn't a bad dude. Hey, Chief, you need something? Yeah, do you have any thoughts? How long were you there? Oh, okay. Interesting. 
What did I just do? Okay. Let's talk to everyone. Hello, puppy, 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 puppy. What a good puppy. Of course we will pet the pup. How you doing, Dee? Spit it out, old man. Messer comp. Yeah, tell me about your idol. like a rocker boy shaman. Okay. Not too bad. How you doing? Old grumpy grump. Uh, I want to be like the least snarky as possible, but... Pusher. Do you have anything valuable to sell? Where to find elves? Wait, was that our blitz responding? So 
see it. Okay, let's talk to uh, Paul. Iger has told me of Green Winter's death. She said that he, he had died in the same manner that Monica did. Yeah, it wasn't a pretty sight. I know that you and Iger have had your differences. I will tell you that she was badly shaken by the sight of Winter's body. She also mentioned that you found something in Winter's safe. A package full of very old discs? May I see them? Good God! I haven't seen one of these since I was a boy. This is a DVD-RW, a storage medium from the mid-2000s. I'm amazed that Winter was able to find a device that could play it. The first disc that I looked at might be readable. The others are damaged, some severely so. I have my doubts about them. For now, let's concentrate on the undamaged disc. There's a little shop outside the Data Haven. Talk to the pr proprietor, Melito Hollier. She might be able to help. Tell her to put the cost of the device on my account. Sweet. Oh, the pupper, pupper, pupper. More pets. I do have that broken drone. Sweet. Um, yeah, so I'm going to play back a DVD RW. Very old. Wait, does she just literally have a DVD player? Nice. A DVD player. RCA. Oh, okay. She doesn't have the player. Sweet. Ancient monitor located. How do I get to the junkyard? So my guess is I won't just be able to charge this to Paul's account. A stout old man looks up from whatever old tech he is tinkering with to squint at you through thick, old-fashioned glasses. He pushes them up with an oil-stained finger as he straightens up to nod at you. He speaks with a gruff but well-meaning tone, heavily accented with German tonality. Oh, guten tag, what can I do for ya? Malik tells me you're the man to speak to about DVDs. That little shrew sent you my way, huh? Will wonders never cease? Well, introductions are in order, I suppose. Shrotty Bush, Shrotty Buckman. Buckman. I don't know. I'm Buckman. I'll just say Buckman. At your service. Need something salvaged? Some old components? I'm indeed your man. Uh, what about a DVD player? Well, let's see. I think I've got something that'll work for you. Ah, here we go. An old Korean player I dug up last week. 2010 model. A real beaut. 
I fix her up and got her running, but without any discs to read, I've mostly been using her as a paperweight. Well, I'll admit I'm a little loath to part with her. There are plenty of folks out there who'd really appreciate an older player such as this. And I don't know what your intentions are for it. I suppose, given time and trouble I took putting her back together, that I'd be willing to part with her for, oh, about 500 million. That is pretty ridiculous. Oh man, can we really get him down even lower? I mean, if an ancient monitor was 200 million, and that's supposedly not a ripoff, like a DVD player for 350 doesn't. Oh no, that's a horrible deal. You have it. Sweet. Well, we got it for a bargain, so I'm good with that. Oh yeah, do you have anything, um, who's the tech, tech person? Let me see if I can afford, like, a new drone. Oh no. Slack from work. Okay, so she doesn't have that other drone. But I could go ahead and get one of these puppies. Uh, I don't want to waste all my money though. I'll just stick with the Doberman for now. How am I doing with, um, Karma? 13? Yeah, okay. That's pretty useful, so. Um, security and. Shadowrunner. Our willpower is going to be always pretty low. Biotech to three. No. And maybe I'll just save this last point. the Ansel has assembled the team in your absence. They stand in a group around the old display that you had Malit deliver. On their faces you can see excitement and apprehension, curiosity and dread. So, have you procured the DVD reader? Indeed. Good, this should only take a moment. Hmm, everything appears to be functional. The disc should be ready to play. Well, don't keep us in suspense. Start the damn thing already. Jack the Rigger went to trouble for fetching everything. Let him do the honors. Sweet. Let's 
away. The screen goes black, and a cheerful digital chiming sound spills out of the display of speakers. A crackle of static fills the air, coupled with a shrill electronic whine. After a few moments, the display goes live, and a disheveled-looking man appears on the screen. His eyes glitter with excitement. So, 2034. Oh. Hermie, I think we found her. After all this time, Firewing, I knew that she wasn't dead. She survived the dragon fall, just as I've always said. I knew it, and I was right. Okay. Taking a team into the socks to retrieve her. The radiation be damned. We'll take appropriate precautions, of course, but we must go. Hermie. I think that the body may be nearby as well. Somehow it... She has survived for all this time. May not be back for some time. Look after Mom, okay? I worry about her. And Hermie, stay safe out there. I know that things are heating up in Berlin, and I know you. Student protests, civil uprising... You'll be in the middle of it, I'm sure. Just stay safe, alright? And I'll do my best to do the same. I don't know what's going to happen when I step into the socks, but I do know one thing. If the fire wing is still a danger, I will put an end to her, once and for all. Oh, green winters. Found the message Adrian left me all those years ago. Got it cleaned up as best I could. Strange hearing his voice again. It's good to hear him, even if he did insist on calling me Hermie. Dr. Adrian Vauclair, the hero of the people, the dragon slayer, my brother. Hard to believe it's been almost 20 years. Alright, so I'm going to start recording these DVDs again. For me. For Adrian. For whoever might wind up watching them. Every time I do this- oh, is he an elf? Every time I do this, it winds up feeling like a waste of time, but I keep doing it anyway. On the off chance that I'll find something important, if I stumble into the clue that leads me to my brother, I know I'm going to want it on film. I've been doing this for almost 20 years now, after all. No sense quitting now. Christ, 20 years. All this time and still no leads, even with all my contacts and my resources. Even with my legendary bullheadedness, I've made no progress at all. I haven't turned up a single goddarn thing. Want to hear something funny? The closest I've gotten to a clue was a rumor. Apparently a team emerged from the socks a while back. Nobody's clear on the date, but get this. Supposedly, they vanished without a trace. Not much of a rumor, considering. I already know that you're gone, big brother. I live with that every day. Stumbled upon this archival footage of Firewing's original attack, months before the Dragonfall. Easy to forget how devastating it was. Adrian saved a lot of people by bringing her down. I've got the footage all queued up to play, starting it now. Additional comments to follow. 2012, okay. Oh. Again, for those of you just joining us, we're coming to you live from Stolberg. A few hours ago, the Dragon Firewing launched an unprovoked attack on this sleepy Harz Mountain town, and you can see the results behind me. Fire, ashes, blood. Hope this is not Chris's blood. We are joined tonight by a survivor of this latest and most horrifying attack. Sir, I understand you've been through a terrible ordeal. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us tonight. Y yes uh, of course. If you could, sir, could you please tell me, uh, or could you please tell the people at home about your experience of the attack? It was, it was horrible, just pure, pure chaos. So many people are dead. People I knew roasted alive or trampled to death trying to escape. My own house was burned to the ground during the attack. My family, we, we have nothing now. 
You all made it through the attack, though. Your wife? Your kids? Yeah, we all made it. Thank goodness. We rode out to a, to the we rode out the attack in a small shelter. Me, my wife, and our two daughters. The shelter it protected us, but the heat was just unbearable. We couldn't have stayed in there much longer than we did. And how long were you holed up in there, sir? Three, maybe four hours? I don't know. We just stayed inside until the heat died down and the screaming stopped. And what happened after that? When it was over, you know, when the air cooled down, we stepped outside. There was nothing left, just smoldering wreckage and this dense cloud of black, oily smoke. And the stench in the air, God, that smell. It smelled like roasting meat. I'm so hungry now. My girls, they found what was left of their nanny outside. Her body, what was left of it, was slumped against the shelter door. I kept telling myself that I couldn't hear her pounding to get in, but that isn't true. I could. I just couldn't bring myself to open that door. I couldn't risk my family like that. Not for her. Not for anyone. Well, thank you, sir, for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah. You heard it here, an absolutely chilling account of tonight's attack. Again, the town of Stolberg has been reduced to ash, another victim of the Firewing. Stay with us for more up-to-the-minute reporting on Firewing's reign of terror. Okay, it's time for a new approach. Adrian's a complete dead end. That much is pretty clear by now, so I'm going to do some digging on Firewing instead. Let's see where this goes. Well, that was a bust. Little progress on Firewing, either. I don't know, it's weird. The information is there, it's just... wrong, somehow. It's too well laid out, too simple. Real life is messy. This feels just a little too... neat. That's not the only thing that's nagging at me. I'm getting that tingly feeling all up and down the back of my neck again. It feels like I'm being tracked. I'm no Matrix hotshot like Clockwork or Schaefer, but I'm good enough to know when someone's on my scent. Gotta install some new security measures, can't be too careful. Whoa, he looks like... garbage now. Christ, I'm getting too close to something. There's a trail of bodies, and there's been disappearances. Gearbox, Martian, Peregrine... They're all disappeared within the. They've all disappeared within the past few years. Gearbox just went AWOL yesterday, and they were all making the same sorts of inquiries about the Firewing that I've been. There are ghost stories spreading around the Decker community. Stories about Decker's disappearing and then showing up again later, but wrong somehow. Scary stuff, and I'm starting to think that it's true. Yeah, I know the stories he's talking about, Chief. Never really put much stock in him up until now. Could these rumors be related to what's happening here? Am I being paranoid? No, I don't think so. Something big is happening here, and I'm right in the middle of it. Well, that's a bit of a leap. One other thing. Tolstoy told me a story about a kill team that might be related to all this. Apparently, a Decker named Hellbore posted a theory about Firewing to the Shadowlands BBS about five years ago. About an hour later, a Millspec team showed up in meat space and cooked her entire apartment, with her in it. If what Tolstoy told me was true, Hellbore live posted the, the event. She described her killer, this great big orc with skin grafts. Then the whole thread disappeared, gone without a trace. Leap, Iger love. Sounds like he's on the right track to me. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. This has gotta be Firewing, all of it. Adrian was right about her. She's still alive, and she's out of the socks. She's covering her tracks, working the shadows, preparing to rise again. And that means that I have to find you, Adrian, for everyone's sake. Thankfully, I've got a lead. For the first time in two decades, I've got a solid goddamn lead. I've backtraced all of the Matrix nodes that Hellbore was looking into, back before she got hooked, cooked. Whoever's been purging the Matrix didn't think about that, and I found that she'd turned up 
a set of map coordinates. So now I've got a target, a place to start digging, the Harfield, Harfeld Manor, conveniently located on an isolated stretch of countryside miles away from prying eyes. Matrix records indicate that some sort of data vault exists beneath the estate, so that's what I need to get into. And this is where we came in. I think I'm going to tap Schaefer for this. She's got the skills to bypass whatever security they're running out there. And she's gullible enough to take the job in the first place. I'll feed her some line about flux state security, and she'll eat it up with a spoon. I warned her. I warned her. Time to put plans into motion. By this time tomorrow night, I'll show the information I need. And on the off chance that Schaefer gets taken out, well, that'll tell me something too. Can't make an omelet and all that. Until then. Suspicions confirmed. Schaefer dead. Christ. Okay, okay, okay. Back up, slow down, start from the beginning. Got the call from my contact in the in the KB. Schaefer killed on the estate run. Matrix security at the, at the estate cooked her brain. Considering Schaefer's skill and experience, on-site ice must have been extreme, even by Berlin standards. Security of that kind costs money. Real money. Given the evidence uncovered so far, corporate involvement unlikely. The connection to Firewing is too strong. So let's come right out and say it. The dragon is what we're dealing with here, and the smart money says that she's coming for me next. Well, I won't go down without a fight. I've still got my contacts, still got my connections, and the flux state can be a hell of a weapon for the man who knows how to manipulate it. Time for me to make my play. Ghost stories or no, missing deckers or no, I've got to jack in and start pulling strings. The countermeasures I installed earlier should be more than enough to keep me safe for the 20 minutes I'll be in there. <sighs> Schaefer's death was tragic. She was a staunch supporter of the F-State. But still, all things considered, better her than me. If you're watching this, I guess they caught up to me. They will be after you too now. Well, what the hell is this? Why didn't you warn me about this before I came here? We didn't know. Not exactly. I didn't even come here to get hunted by a dragon. I'm not a part of this. You are now, whether you like it or not, so quiet down and stop bothering him. Whoever you are, and whatever you think you're after, you need to find Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Not because he's my brother, because if Firewing is rising again, he's the only one who can stop her. You've seen what happens to people who get too close to this. I'm dead, and dozens of others have died. You'll be next, unless you can find Adrian. Well, sweet. A dragon, son of a bitch. Winter set up up set. Winter's sent us up against a dragon. The Firewing. She lives. I'm really starting to regret the fact I didn't just stay at the hotel. Now wait a second. We don't know for certain. The evidence seemed pretty convincing to me, love. I'll even take it a step further. I think that secret facility that we stumbled into was her lair. Just think about it. The Decker that Winters got those coordinates from was posting about Firewing. Then she was killed by that same orcish bastard that attacked us after Monica died. That's a direct hard link between the dragon, the scarred orc, and the Harfeld Manor. And then Winters was killed by the same thing that killed Monica. Exactly. My gut tells me that the dragon's down there. Jack the Rigger, someplace far beneath the surface. I think we knocked on the door to her lair without even knowing it. And I think that, given what we've seen, the dragon will do whatever it takes to keep us quiet about it. Well, 
Well, all right. Going on the assumption that there is a dragon and that she will come after us, what do you propose we do about it? Um, yeah, we find uh, that Vauclair dude. Yes, Jack the Rigger is right. Finding Dr. Vauclair should be our priority. If we're going up against a dragon, we need to find ourselves a dragon slayer. Winters spent 20 years searching for Vauclair, and it got him nowhere. How do you propose that we find him? Why, with the help of an information broker. Oh. While Air Buragazi is very capable, a task of this magnitude is beyond him. We need to make contact with the premier information broker in Berlin. We need to talk to Alice. Alice, best of luck. I hope that you're rich. For this, rich enough, even if only just. Well, who's this Alice? Why, a most prominent figure in Berlin's shadow community. ex shock Wellenrider. She provides information retrieval services for the F-State. If Winters was right, if Vauclair is still alive, she can help us find him. Here, your key to speak with Alice. An encoded cred stick, yes? 10,000 new yen. Alice will not show her face for less. This represents the last of my personal savings, Jack the Rigger. Make this meeting count. It's a standard fee. Alice is in a position to ask it, and we're in no position to argue. Where to? Take the U-Bahn to the Aldstadt Spandau. There you will find connecting tube, uh, a connecting tube that the locals refer to as the rabbit hole. You will find a method of contacting Alice there. Don't call it that in front of her, though. Word on the street is that she hates it. Please hurry. While you're out, I'll work on acquiring new contracts for the team. Alice is the best there is at what she does, and her services carry a price tag to match. Okay, sweet. Oh, is my drone done yet? I guess not. See, I don't know what type of drone it is, and so I... Hmm. I don't want to end up buying, like, the same drone. Arcade machine. The only active console in this derelict span of Yupon platform is an old video arcade machine. The CRT monitor set into the machine's cabinet glows invitingly. Cheerful, pixelated graphics swirl and dance on the screen. At the base of the controller panel, you find a cleverly hidden input port. The port is shrouded in black plastic and appears to be the appropriate shape of a typical cred stick. Internal motors grip the cred stick and pull it into the machine. It disappears into the port and the screen goes black. Moments later, a video image fills the screen. The picture is dark and grainy, a far cry from the bright, colorful sprites that previously inhabited the display. On the screen is a dimly lit office. The place looks like it was pulled straight from an old detective movie. From the Venetian blinds on the windows to the great swaths of shadow that paint the walls black. 
Center stage, sitting behind a large mahogany desk, is the silhouette of an impressive-looking woman in a charcoal gray suit. The tip of a cigarette glows cherry red in the shadows. She leans forward into the light, and you catch your first glimpse of Alice. Her face is all hard planes and sculpted angles, with high cheekbones and almond eyes. Her lips are painted a frigid blue, but the look in her eyes is even colder. The head of lustrous black hair is interspersed with flowing streams of cyan light. Alice exhales, exhales a plume of smoke and then tips her cigarette into a nearby ashtray. She fixes her eyes on you, and her lips curl into a humorless smile. We're on your dime, friend. Tell me what you're looking for. And you find Dr. Adrian Beauclair. The Dragon Slayer. Interesting. He's been missing for a long time. Yes, he has. The question is, can you find him? If he is out there somewhere, I'll find him for you. He could be living under an assumed name in California Free State, and I'd still track him down. And if he's not alive, I'll tell you where you can find his corpse. What is this option here? Alright, here's how this is going to work. When you give me the go-ahead, I'm going to start gathering information for you. Once I've finished, you're going to bring me a cred stick encoded with an encryption key that I'll provide you. That cred stick will have 50,000 Nuyen on it. When I get my cred stick, you get your information. This is the deal. Take it or leave it. Apparently I know better than you do, sport. Do you know how much work it takes to find a digital ghost? There's going to be wet work, breaking into government archives, hell, I might even have to commission an expedition into the socks. This is a serious undertaking, friend. Now do we have a deal, or don't we? Okay, but remember, you say go, and I go. From that point on, you're on the hook to pay me my fee. No turning back, no refunds. We square? Sweet. Well, we are going to have to do a lot of jobs to make that much money. Pupper's still following me. Uh, pup, 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 pup. You need a bet. What a good pup. Jack the Rigger, did you make contact with Alice? Yeah, I did. She accepted your payment. I ordered the search for the information we need. Very good. I can't imagine this will be cheap. What was Alice's stated price? Well, you're right on that count. 50,000 New Yen. Well, it's about as, uh, as, as I had expected. Thankfully, we are prepared for this. I've established contact with a number of new clients. You can find information on the jobs logged in your mission computer. One job's file is on there already. While you're working to earn Alice's fee, I will continue to dig for clues about Firewing. If she is, in fact, roosting under the Harfeld Manor, then there must be some evidence to support that fact. A dragon is a large thing to hide, after all. Careful, Paul. Remember what happened to Monica. 
I will never forget. Don't worry, Jack the Rigger. I'm going to conduct my investigation the old-fashioned way, through contacts and deduction and careful observation. I will not jack into the Matrix until this entire sorry episode is finished. Speaking of doing things the old-fashioned way, Malit is working to recover information off those other DVDs. It's a painstaking process, and it will not be quick, but she is optimistic that she will succeed in time. And finally, I've been checking up on our friend, the orc with the skin grafts. I haven't heard anything back yet, but I'll keep you appraised as the situation develops. One last thing before you go, Jack the Rigger. Samuel Beckenbauer wanted me to pass a message to you. Do you know him, the orc who runs the shelter across the way? Ah, well he has a job for you. He wouldn't discuss it with me, but he promised that it would prove worth your time. Alrighty. So we have a lot of stuff to do. Let's go meet with uh, old Sammy out here. And maybe we'll talk to Malik. have my drone yet? Only two. Two karmas. So what do you want, Sammy? Hello again, my friend. What can I do for you? Yeah, I heard you had a job. Yes, yes I do. Thank you for coming so promptly. Tell me, what do you know about the Humanus Polo Club? Polo Club? Uh, okay, they're a hate group. Yes, the largest and most well-funded of its kind. The instigators of the Night of Rage, and the enemy of everything that I stand for. Yes, a worldwide race riot that took place in February of 2039. Thousands of innocent metahumans were attacked, beaten, and killed. Women and children were corralled into warehouses for protection and then burned alive when the structures were put to the torch. This is what Humanus stands for. This is the agenda that its leaders strive to advance. They will not be satisfied until all metahumans everywhere are driven from the face of the earth. Yesterday, I overheard one of my assistants talking on his comm. He was yelling, clearly agitated. I questioned him and he confided in me. What he told me made my blood run cold. It cut to chase. Yeah, yes, of course. Please forgive my rambling. I'm not accustomed to dealing with people in your line of work. The long and the short of it is that the Berlin chapter of Humanus is planning something. Something involving a large shipment of an extremely hazardous chemical. Their leader, Volker Stahl, is a vicious ideologue who goes without saying... Oh, it goes without saying that whatever he intends to do, it won't be good for us. I want you to infiltrate the smuggling operation that is delivering the shipment. Once you arrive at the Humanus compound, you will find out what they're planning to do with the chemical and put a stop to it. Hmm... What makes you think they'll talk to me? I'm no more human than you. Yes, many of the smugglers are metahumans. If you travel with them, Humanus will allow you into their compound. The rest will be up to you. Why would they deal with metahuman smugglers? Presumably because of the best option available. Stahl is nothing if not a pragmatist. He will work with metahumans when it suits him to do so. When he's finished with them, he'll discard them and move on. Uh, would it would be easier to hijack the shipment. <laughs> no, stopping the shipment would not stop Humanus. They would merely acquire another. For a pack of snarling racists, they're extremely well funded. I have contacted sister organizations across Berlin and taken up a collection. Between us, we have raised 
22,000 new yen of, as payment. Yeah, that'll be sufficient. Excellent, I'm relieved. I'll make the arrangements for your meeting with the smugglers. Their leader is an elf who calls himself Maxim. Take the Yuban to Shotten, Shotten Nest, and you will find him waiting there. Best of luck to you, Jack the Rigger, and good hunting. Know that you're doing a great thing for the metahumans of Berlin. Your efforts will not go unrecognized. I think that's a good place to call it, actually. We will start doing some jobs um, next week. I'm going to play more. I'm going to save and go grab some custard. Oh, I can't save my game. Why? Cool. Game saved. Whew. Well, thank you for chilling with me. I'm going to get 